What's going on guys? It's Tony from Lone Wolf Paintball and today I'm going to go over the top five questions we get about purchasing a tank. All right, so I hear CO2 and I hear about compressed air. What's the difference? Okay, CO2 and compressed air. <clears throat> right here, guys, pretty much CO2 has been around uh, since the beginning, the inception of paintball. So CO2, you're actually filling this bottle with liquid CO2. So the faster you shoot your gun, the more frost or, or, or freeze you're gonna see come out the end of the barrel. CO2 is being slowly phased out. It still works for your old school, you know, Tipman 98 custom stuff like that. Very, very beginner-ish um, stuff. So I would highly recommend, you know, CO2 gets the job done, but I would stay away from it. Secondly, you can't run CO2 on your, your beginner like tournament guns because it's going to freeze up the solenoid, it's going to freeze up the gun, and you're going to have nothing but issues and broken parts to fix. So CO2, the difference is here, I'm literally filling this bottle with liquid CO2, which eventually will be sucked up into the gun, and it's going to freeze it up over time. Compared to like your high pressure air here, um, people call it nitrogen or HPA, known as high pressure air. This is literally just a straight gas, and this will not freeze up your gun. So I would highly recommend going with a beginner HPA bottle. Uh, bonus question on that topic. Go ahead. Uh, which one of those can I fill with my garage air compressor? You cannot fill either of these with your garage air compressor. What we get asked that all the time. You need something that has a minimum output of around 3000 PSI to get this tank to its full capacity. All right. Okay. Uh, next question is the difference between what are bottles made out of? I hear aluminum, I hear carbon fiber, I hear steel, what, what's... Okay, so pretty much bottle composition per se. So this is your standard aluminum bottle here, CO2. You also have your high pressure air tank, which is 48 um, CI, which means cubic inches and how big that tank is, how much air it holds. Um, this is also aluminum based. Then you move on to your carbon fibers mark here, which is gonna be the rest of these over here. Carbon fibers, you pretty much have a tank similar to this, but also wrap the outer layer in carbon fiber for extra security, um, for extra strength, because these bottles are gonna be holding more pressure than these other two over here. So pretty much you have your alu true aluminums, and then you have your carbon fiber uh, bottle wraps. So. so where's the steel tank come in? I hear steelies, steel tank. Steelies, they call these, they call these steelies. Hey, I need a 3000 steely. Um, these are aluminum bottles. They're not steel. So okay. they're um, trying to trick me. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they, I think there was a couple bottles made out of steel. I'm almost completely positive. These are aluminum bottles. Okay. Uh, you had mentioned CI cubic inch. What does that mean? Like, how do I know what, how much it holds, how much air I can so put in So pretty much what we have here. So this is a 40, you can see on there, 48 CI cubic inches. That is how the actual, you know, the diameter or how much air this tank is going to hold. You've got a 48 CI, these two right here, these are 68 CIs, which just means you're gaining, you have bigger capacity within, you know, holding more air and with inside of the bottle. And then you move on to stuff. We have 77s, we have 80s, and there's 90s. I believe this one is the infamous 80. Yep, this one's an infamous 80 CI right there. So as you see CI cubic inches, you're having more air um, capability with inside of the bottle. So, so does more, that mean it pushes harder or that I get more shots? More shots. I was just going to say that it doesn't push harder. It's just going to get you more shots um, on whatever marker you guys are shooting. So. so what dictates how much pressure comes out and how hard the gun... Is that, is that going to be number like number four? -ish? Maybe. It, we're, it, talking, we're talking about regulator quality here. So we'll start off with this is... Let's, let's do just a rough price point first before I talk about regs and why that's important. So like a standard CO2, uh, probably around 35 bucks here. You step on up to the high pressure air tank with a nice gauge on there, shows you how much air you have left. These are gonna run you about anywhere from 50 to 60 bucks for your, your aluminum 3K tank. And then you get onto something like the Empire Megalite, around 140 bucks. Ninja, better reg quality, which we'll go over in just a second. 160 to 170, and then you step on up, better reg quality, $230 price point, and then around up to here, even better reg quality for shoot 270 to 280, depending on what you want with it. So, reg quality. 
This um, 68 4500 tank, 4500 meaning that's the maximum PSI that the tank's gonna hold. It's a very standard, basic reg here. Probably, probably made overseas, gets the job done. We're moving on to a Ninja regulator here. Stuff is made in the USA, tested, truly tested time after time. And um, these things are just better quality, better um, metal per se used so it doesn't strip out on your gun and you're having to replace the top bonnets on these tanks. So Ninja, made in the USA, better quality there. And then you're moving on to something. You've got this Ninja, it's got a Pro V2 on there. You can change out pressures, output pressures, stuff like that, where the positioning of the fill nipple is and the gauges on your gun. You can move this gold ring around. That's a great option there for the Ninja Pro V2s. And then you move on to something made by Powerhouse, which is made with stainless steel. So I highly, highly doubt something like this will ever strip out on you. I mean, you've really got to be doing something completely wrong, screwing your tank on the gun to strip out something made of stainless steel. So reg qualities, cheap aluminum, a lot better aluminum, you know, built in the USA. And then you've got your pretty much your top notch stuff made out of stainless steel. What's so. on the, the two steel tanks? What, these? Yeah, just very, your standard aluminum. Okay. Yep. Um, while we're there still talking about the regs, I'm curious. So my tank's a 3,000, my tank's a 4,500. Yep. Why do why are my gauges go up to 60? Okay, so 6, pretty much any tank out there, it's always going to be tested well above and beyond what it's, uh, the advertised capacity is per se. So a lot of these gauges, I've heard it time and time again. Yeah, this gauge goes up to 6,000 PSI. Clearly on the bottle, this is a 3,000 PSI tank. You're only gonna fill this tank to 3,000. You never fill it until the gauge goes off the charts. So it is a 3,000 tank. The reason why is because these gauges are all universal. These companies aren't gonna make a gauge that only you know goes up to three, let's say 4,000 and put it on here. Keep the same gauge, universal across all the platforms, but just be aware of what your tank actually reads on the bottle. So you got 3,000 PSI here, and then all of these other tanks are gonna be holding up to 4,500 PSI. You're gonna have more air. Does hmm. that answer your question? I think so. Okay. If not, somebody will tell me in the comments. Okay, cool, that's good. Next up. Uh, next is kind of like cosmetics. I mean, so this is number five then. Yeah. Everything doesn't okay. look the same, right? So. No. So pretty much cosmetic wise, obviously CO2, you've got your standard, your, your steelies or your three K tanks. They come in just all black, red, blue, green, gunmetal, all sorts of colors. But then you move on to something like this higher end tank, just a standard, like, like a black smoked color. Cool. But, uh, Hey, your setup's all green. Get a green tank. Your setup's blue, get a blue tank. Then you're talking stuff like this. Also, same thing. Um, it's not super flashy or fancy. It just got a tons of different color options on the Ninja bottles. And then other companies as well. They you, you want a skull. Do you want a fancy diamond print? Do you want Gucci print on your tank? Cosmetics is pretty much going to be up to you. Speaking on that point, you're looking at Tank cases, this stuff's expensive guys. You're gonna want tank cases. Depending on what brand you like or who you choose, we've got tons of options. If you guys want, um, I would highly recommend actual tank covers. So if you guys want something flashy fancy, speaking back to the co cosmetic wise, so they have tons of tank colors and I mean, what's your favorite? You have a controller tank cover mark? Or? Yeah, mine has like the Nintendo like style controller. Exactly, so they make tons of different options for that. Uh, the list goes on, check them out on the website. And then even like this HK Army tank, it's a white tank, looks you know pretty flashy and fancy. So stuff like that. The cosmetics is always up to you guys, depending on what you like. And it helps protect them, right? I mean, these tanks are durable, but they do get chipped. They do get scratched, the coatings come off. So keeping them protected, whether it's in a cover while you play or a tank case for storage and transportation. Well, that's that's it too. Speaking on the last cosmetic type, it's like people are like, why do I care if this has a skull on there if I'm just gonna cover it up with a tank cover anyways? So it depends. It's all personal preference at that point in time. There's a hundreds of different designs out there. It's just on you guys to pick what you guys like. So if you uh, don't think that the design of the tank matters and you're gonna cover it up with a tank case anyways, then so be it. All right, 
If you guys got any questions that's that it. we didn't hit, uh, let us know in the comments below and we'll do another oh, follow-up video. Oh, lastly, because I know that's, yeah, for sure. I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, air pressures like these Ninja, the Pro Regs. You can take out shims. You can lower it from 800 to, uh, I believe, 450 is the lowest the Ninja goes. The Haymakers can go all the way down to 400. So depends on what type of style marker you're using. The higher end tanks, and that is why you're paying more money. You can mess with adjusting pressures as long as you know what you're doing. And if you don't, take it to your local field where a professional can help you out. Yeah, I mean, doesn't my gun regulate the pressure? It will, but a lot of people like to run, uh, some guns can only run on super low pressure tanks. So it just depends on what type of marker you guys are running. All right. Uh, That's it for now. Uh, check out the website, lonewolfpaintball.com, obviously, and hit that subscription button if you haven't already. And if you haven't joined our new Facebook group about asking questions that aren't related to this video, go join Ooh. us over there because we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff. That's it. Take it easy, guys. See you.